Let's try out this pretty recent question. Problem 23 from 2017 AMC 12A. For certain real numbers A, B, and C, so we, it's not telling us they are integers, it's not telling us they are rational, it's telling us they are real, and it's not telling us that they are complex. And it's always good to just make sure we know what our constraint is because the problem usually changes dramatically if we are dealing with real numbers or rational numbers or integers or complex. So it's always good to make sure we know what numbers we are talking about. And the polynomial g of x equals to x cubed plus ax squared plus x plus 10 has three distinct roots. And each root of g of x is also a root of the polynomial f of x, which is x to the fourth plus x cubed plus bx squared plus 100x plus c. And we wish to find f of 1. And we can see that f of 1, when you just plug 1 into this polynomial, we get 1 plus 1 plus b plus 100 plus c, just plugging 1 into this function, which is equal to 102 plus b plus c. So as soon as we find b plus c or b and c individually, we are going to be done. Now, obviously, this constraint about how G and F have these three roots that they share, because the all, every single root of G, the three distinct roots, is also the root of F, and this thing seems very, very important. So, since we're talking about roots, why don't we write a factored form of G of X and F of X? We know G of X is X minus some R sub 1 times X minus some R sub 2, times x minus some r sub 3 because we have roots r sub 1, r sub 2, and r sub 3. And similarly, we know f of x can be written as x minus r sub 1. We know it shares r sub 1, r sub 2, and r sub 3. So these are the same as g and f. And we are going to multiply by another root, r sub 4. So now, what is this telling us? That's telling us that when we divide, when we divide f of x by g of x, Every single one of these factors are going to cancel out except x minus r sub 4. So this thing is telling us when we divide f of x by g of x, we should get x minus r sub 4 with no remainder, with remainder, with remainder of 0. So we're just getting quotient of x minus r to the 4th. And that's giving us an idea of maybe we can solve this question by dividing f of x by g of x. So why don't we try to do so? So we have f of x being x to the fourth plus x cubed plus bx squared plus 100x, 100x plus c, divided by g of x, which is x cubed plus ax squared plus x plus 10. So let's go down. We know, let's look at the highest degree terms. We have x cubed and x to the fourth. We know x cubed goes into x to the fourth x times. So now let's multiply this entire expression by x. So we get x to the fourth plus ax cubed plus x squared plus 10x. And of course, we want to subtract this part. I'm just doing polynomial long division. So x to the fourth cancel out. And we have 1 minus a x cubed plus b minus 1 x squared plus 90x plus c. And we can do this one more time. Look at the highest degree terms. x cubed and 1 minus a x cubed. And we know x cubed goes into 1 minus ax cubed 1 minus a times. So let's multiply this equation by 1 minus a. So 1 minus ax cubed. So just multiply this thing by 1 minus a. Plus a times 1 minus ax squared. Plus 1 minus ax. Plus 10 times 1 minus a. And of course we want to subtract this once again. x cubed terms cancel out. And we have b minus 1 minus a times 1 minus a x squared plus 90 minus 1 minus a x plus c minus 10 times 1 minus a. And this thing is telling us a very, very many things about, about our various constraints and various constants because we know, to begin with, we know the remainder of this division has to be 0. So that's telling us this entire thing has to be 0x squared plus 0x plus zero. So every single coefficient of x squared x and just the constant term has to be zero. So we already have three equations that's coming out of it. We know this, this part has to be zero. We know this thing has to be zero. And we know this thing has to be zero because remainder has to be zero. 
And we also know, when we divide this out, we are supposed to get x minus r sub 4 as the quotient. So we know this thing, we know this thing has to be equal to x minus r sub 4, or 1 minus a is negative r sub 4. So that's another equation we have found. So now let's try to connect all of these together. So now let's, it's time to make connections. So we have, we have, so that's the first equation, 1 minus a is equal to negative r sub 4. And we know b minus 1 minus a times 1 minus a is 0. And we know 90 minus 1 minus a is 0. And obviously we can find a by solving this equation for a. And we know c minus 10 times 1 minus a has to be 0. Let's start with the one with only one variable, the second equation. And from this, we get 89 plus a is 0, or a is negative 89. Now we can use this to find the value of b and c. Now let's start with b. From this equation, we know b is equal to 1 plus a times 1 minus a. We know a is negative 89. So we have 1 minus 89 times 1 plus 89, or 90. And that's 1 minus 1 minus 8010, or negative 8009. So we have found b. Can we find c? Of course, by using this equation. We know c is equal to 10 times 1 minus a, or 10 times 90 using the fact that a is negative 89, or c is equal to 900. And in fact, we, well, what, do, what are we looking for? We are looking for the value of f of 1, which is 102 plus b plus c. So as soon as we find 102 plus b plus c, we're done. And it turns out we are already done. We know the value of b, we know the value of c, so we can find the final answer. So it turns out we do not even need this equation. It's extraneous if you are going through the solution as written. So now we can find our final answer, which is 102 minus 8009 plus 900. Let's do addition first. So we have 1002 minus 8009, which is negative 7007. So negative 7007 is the solution C.